Hello, gang. What a day. What a day. This is going to be... It's going to be an exciting video, but at the same time, a warning. All right, out there. This is a serious time. Money is serious. Uh, and some people are not taking it seriously. So let's not get carried away. We're still very early. And beware of who you listen to. Don't listen to fools and tools. All right, very important. This will be the biggest Bitcoin video I think I've ever done because there's so much to understand, so much to learn. Okay, and the last 48 hours was completely insane. So thank you all for coming. Let's go. Uh, as usual, this is a Bitcoin only, pure Bitcoin. Remember, we focus on where the action is at. And a shout out to everyone on Patreon. I got my Patreon mug here, Satyandra. Katewa says, I'm a physician and now a Patreon member almost one month now, and I've never felt more comfortable in the last four years. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much as well. Uh, and remember to hide your surname, uh, keep everything private as well. So let's go. There's a playlist for all of these updated every day. And remember, only 49 days to go to the having. All right. That's not a lot of time. And we've seen how things move so fast. And I did say on DCA on Monday, it looks like we're definitely going to hit the all-time high before the halving. And wow, what just happened? This is some perspective here. Let this sink in. Bitcoin is nearly testing all-time high, all highs before the halving. This has never happened in history. All right? Never happened in history. This asset is hard. The money flowing in is out of control. Oh God, the Australians are up too. Hey, Andy, thank you for coming. It's what I've been saying. This time is different. This time is nuts. And I'm going to share with you so many data points that will convince you that it's a special time. So hold on tight. First of all, this is crazy and sad. And I hate when people miss out. Shout out to Sanjay as well, who shared this. Um, his captions, not mine. But it is a huge swath of the United States of America missing out. You can see the interest in the sub-regions of the states. And I'm sure we could do this for every part of the world. But just this just shows you that very few know what's going on. All right. The top places right now, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Florida, California, Washington State, Texas. That's it. The rest of the country is blissfully ignorant of what's happening right now. Your job is to tell them it's not too late. All right. This is a changing time. And I will show you ex exactly why with the following. Let me see. I don't even know how many slides we have today. 54 nuggets. It's a monster. It took me all morning and I haven't slept in two days. So if I screw up, don't hate on me too much. So first of all, <laughs> the Finkster is just in. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF took in another $520 million yesterday. One ETF. The biggest inflow for a Bitcoin ETF ever. The second biggest inflow of any ETF ever. In a day. You get that? I'll repeat it. The second biggest inflow of any ETF yesterday. They now have $8 billion in assets, and it's now top 5% among all ETFs. And we're only 32 days in. It's absolutely mind-boggling. Way beyond my expectations. And I was very bullish. In addition, remember, everybody, the T plus one. I spent a lot of time talking about the T plus one. They take in the money. People buy the shares. And then at nighttime, sometimes a day later, they've got to buy the Bitcoin. All right. So what you see today happens tomorrow. Get that. So it's... It's almost too crazy. So this is from Pleb Statistics, uh, done by a fund manager, and they looked at the relationship, the correlation between Bitcoin price versus BT, Bitcoin ETF buying and selling. And you can see the correlation is 0.4692, which is very, very correlated. But the point is, if you look at the relationship between US spot Bitcoin ETFs and the Bitcoin price action, it's different from what you expect. And the bigger the inflow today, the bigger the price increase tomorrow. All right, as I've been saying since the beginning, T plus one is time plus one day. All right, remember that. And there's people, people see huge volumes and stuff and they think, oh, it's a top. It's like, no, no, you got to add a massive, massive time factor in there too. In addition, 
my math works. I was off by two days. Um, we were <laughs> stable for quite a while. I made a video 13, 14 days ago that uh, we would hit 62,000 in 11 days if history repeats. And we hit 64,000 today. So I was 2,000 lo <laughs> lower than expectations and two days late. So sorry about that. But it's bloody good. I was impressed. Anyway, the math works, okay? The, the stuff we do is we analyze all the data, all the money flow, all the on-chain data, all the scarcity, and we come to conclusions like this, okay? Very important. In addition, it's not just the ETFs buying. I've been talking about Mr. 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 100 and HODL 15 for the longest time. All right, this guy goes into high gear all of a sudden. You can see he normally buys 100 Bitcoin three times a day. But guess what he did today? Guess what he did? Anybody? All right. <laughs> I'll repeat this. This, whoever this is, we're not sure. They've, they're now the 15th, maybe the 14th biggest wallet now. They buy 300 Bitcoin every single day, like clockwork, no matter what the price. doesn't matter. They don't care. But while you were sleeping, one person, Mr. 100, bought 700 Bitcoin. And only 900 daily Bitcoin are issued every day. Okay, this one person bought seven-ninths of the daily supply before the other ETFs even have a piece. Just the nine ETFs I'm talking about, too. It's insane. And a reminder of the hardness, everybody. All right. Yesterday, Bitcoin purchased by ETFs, 10,050. New Bitcoin produced by miners, 900. And we are 32 days in. 32 days. Let that sink in. So exciting. In addition, it's crazy, too. Uh, Bitcoin used to be called magic internet money back in the day. I thought it was kind of funny. But <laughs> if you look here... Never, ever seen this. Bitcoin versus country M1 money supply. Bitcoin's market cap has quickly surpassed the M1 now of both Canada and Australia. And this magic internet money stuff called Bitcoin is now in the top 10. A new record. Everybody. Exciting times. In addition, uh, all the fiats are collapsing. We're making new all-time highs every day in all countries of the world. Ding dong, Vietnamese dong is now at an all-time high in terms of Bitcoin. So, um, you know, fiat, I call this melting ice cube. Many people do as well. Because this is what's happening. I talk about black holes all the time, obsessed with them. And there's the, the, the other black hole you know, but there's another one. There's one sucking in all the fiat, and that's the Bitcoin fiat black hole. And what a beautiful graphic. It's... And again, going back to the tragedy, all right? The, going back to the tragedy, one more time, so you can remind your friends, very few people are completely oblivious to what's happening. That's just the United States, and I'm sure... There's a huge swath of the planet that's completely missing out on this black hole, okay? So your job is to try to help them. And I know you may think it's too late, but it's never too late to get into a hard asset. And remember, this time is very different. In addition, um, people get annoyed when I say in addition, but it's kind of, it's like, and there's more. It's kind of part of the fun thing that I do. Anyhow, uh, breaking news, Jeff Bezos is buying part two. This is from Marty Party, and I did cover this about 10 days ago. I said, the funny feeling that Jeff Bezos is selling stock and he's investing in robots, and he's also buying Bitcoin, kind of diversifying his big Amazon bag, which is fair. I think he sold $4 billion worth of Amazon stock. But the rumor is now, from Marty Party, he split his book, Store Stock, into self-custody Bitcoin and BlackRock Bitcoin shares. And he has followed the wallet and reported on its existence that Jeff sold his stock and the numbers match up, okay? Great ride, turn selling of books into digital gold. But Amazon to, to Bitcoin, 1.33 billion, and Amazon to iBit, about 3 billion, and the other 100 million or so into robots. <laughs> Interesting allocation. And we're not saying it happened, but it's a good conversation starter. And Marty Party is hunting evidence. Well, Marty, I got something special for you. You ready? Check this out. Guess who's on boats together with Sailor? Jeff Bezos. He's taking sexy selfies with his new fiance, Lauren Sanchez, I think is her name, on a half a billion dollar super yacht. 
So we'll see. Hang on, being, I mean, Sailor's hanging out with David Geffen, Barry Diller, Michael Sailor. And guess what they're talking about? Bitcoin. Now, uh, Kathy Woods, she's awesome. Um, breaking news uh, and trust. And we love trust here. And we love truth and trust, the two T's. But Kathy Woods, ARK Invest has integrated proof of reserves for its spot Bitcoin ETF. So you, now you can verify exactly what is in that ETF at any given time, which is awesome. Thank you, Coach Casey. Uh, so kind of you. And I gotta say it, there's there's more. There's a hell of a lot more. We're not even we're not even a third of the way through this journey, everybody. Breaking news as well. Shout out to the team in the UK. Sorry about this. This is going to sound a little bit bad, but it has to be said too, because we did speak about this. The fiat black hole. Bitcoin sucking it in. Now, JVS, James Van Stratton, a uh, great follow on Twitter. <laughs> He says, Bitcoin is on the cusp of breaking all-time highs in GB pesos. GBP is the symbol for a British pound, and he calls them GB pesos. Uh, and the key is as well, this is all happening while one of the biggest UK financial service companies is imploding, called St. James's Place. Again, I'm sorry about all the chaos in the UK and in Europe and other places around the world, but it's happening everywhere at the same time. And again, another fiat currency is about to be smoked in a new Bitcoin all-time high. Probably already has since I've been talking as well. Crazy. Actually, while we're here, let me make sure we find out what Bitcoin's doing. 61,400. There was a huge interruption that interrupted the price action. I'll talk about that in a minute too. But that shouldn't derail you, everybody. Always keep your head out the window. Look at what's going on in the real world. Now, another piece of very exciting on-chain news. Uh, we are now already higher than the highest monthly close Okay, 61.357. We're at 61.5 as I speak. We are higher than this. Okay, we just need to stay up here for guess how many more days? Tomorrow's the 29th. 29th, everybody be safe. Some people are superstitious and believe the 29th and a leap year can result in dangers. So be extra cautious tomorrow. But be in the markets, of course, as well. Uh, in addition, uh, we are <laughs> breaking new Bitcoin all time highs and a whole bunch of currencies. This is the top of the currency list. Over 20, maybe 25, maybe 30 have already been smoked by Bitcoin. You got Japanese yen here, number three, smoked. Norwegian krona, smoked. Turkish lira, smoked. Swedish krona, smoked. Uh, British pound, about to be smoked. Um, it's just happening. So the all-time highs are just fit fast and furious at this stage, and they're falling fast. In addition, we did hit $64,000 today, briefly. And then, guess what happened? Coinbase broke. And here it is. And I must say, I had a mini heart attack. I wanted to trade something, went in to move some stuff around, and boom! And by the way, I only keep a little bit on Coinbase, but it still is enough to give a little heart attack when you go in and you see your portfolio balance is zero. With all the talks of people kind of being hacked and screwed, it was enough just to always have that shock to the heart that nothing is safe or secure. So everybody button up your security. That is crazy. Now, when Bitcoin broke, the market broke too. We saw a the most violent swing ever. I was on the 30 second chart watching Bitcoin price go from 64 straight down to, I think it hit 58, I want to say. $6,000 in probably two minutes. It was nuts. Anyway, that's the type of stuff as well that messes people up too, uh, especially leverage longs. They get completely crushed. Joseph Samuel, thank you so much for coming. Now, um, in, let me see, back to volumes, very important. Smoking hot volumes out there. This is uh, Eric Bolchunas. We're only halfway through the trading day and nine Bitcoin ETFs have already broken their all-time highs, 2.6 billion. Remember, volume translates directly to buying. Okay, I've been analyzing this for 32 days, actually built a predictive model that does it for me. And when we look at the numbers, and this is taken, the snapshot is taken about an hour ago. We have 60 million. I've never seen more than 42 million of volume for IBIT. We have 60 million today, and that's only halfway through the day. Okay? And remember T plus one? Yeah, the money comes in. They buy tomorrow or tonight. So it could be another third miraculous night. We could break a new all-time high tonight based on this volume data. And remember, this action, this price action is triggering global FOMO 
all around the world for those that are watching markets. Speaking of <laughs> foolishness and fools, uh, this is a cool chart as well from um, Into the Block, I think, or CryptoQuant, Into the Block, it is. Uh, anyway, it's from Jesse Myers, and you know, uh, wait, this is, <laughs> you can look here, look, look, folks on the right, look at the black line, they are hedge funds. Hedge funds are going heavy, heavy, short Bitcoin futures, all right? They are shorting Bitcoin like idiots. A anybody who jumps in front of a freight train, as I call it, during this time cannot add two and two together and doesn't understand how markets work. All right. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, it's people just looking for their heads to be handed to them, literally. And another wild statistic as well. Retail FOMO has just landed. This is a wild statistic. And there were more individual trades yesterday in the Bitcoin ETFs than there were in the S&P 500 ETF and the QQQ ETF. And this is before they even have options or are available on many advisory platforms. Big retail component just came in all of a sudden. They are experiencing FOMO as well, bigger than I estimated. Just so you can see as well, it's the, the gold is the sum of the nine new spot Bitcoin ETFs. Blue is the S&P 500 and green is the Invesco QQQ. And it smoked them both. Also a new record. Can it get any better? Let's find out. Uh, let's look at this as well. This is what also getting a, attention from a lot of people is not only has the performance smoked uh, the traditional assets like the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, but I want you to cast your eyes on this. The total assets under management in the S&P 500 ETF just from BlackRock is $443 billion. IBIT only has $6 billion right now. <laughs> so the question is, is the six billion going to grow to 400 billion? And even if it did, would there be even be enough Bitcoin for them to buy? I doubt it. And that's just one ETF. Okay, futures bright. In addition, performance. The other thing that's getting people's attention, if you look at the last six weeks, okay, not bad. We have the S&P 500 up 6%. And anybody who bought IBIT is up 23% in six weeks. That is, that's like two years of returns on traditional markets, ladies and gentlemen. And it's early days yet. Uh, in addition, breaking news, Bitcoin added $800 billion in market cap since 2023. This is from Checkmate at Glassnode. And you probably won't believe it at first, but the market cap was only $320 billion at the start of 2023. And since then, it hit $1.2 trillion over that right now and it becomes of course the 10th largest asset on earth and next in the box is meta and then silver and then up the chain and meta and silver will be smoked probably in the next week or so i reckon in addition be careful of advice again it's very important to everybody in this stage of your life remove all toxicity from your world and remove negativity from your world okay this is again Another infamous tweet from Jim Cramer. It's unlikely that Bitcoin finds its footing. January 22nd. Okay. Can you imagine all the people that he influenced to sell Bitcoin? Just imagine. He has quite a bit of a reach. And speaking of more delusion as well, Peter Schiff. The most likely explanation for the weakness in gold stocks is that investors are selling them to buy Bitcoin ETFs instead. By the way, he's trying to make an excuse for why gold is so weak and why it sucks. And that means Bitcoin has basically become a bet against gold. So when gold inevitably breaks out, the money will buy gold stocks. D -d money to buy gold stocks will come from Bitcoin ETFs. Okay, Peter, you're a smart man. I'm talking to you very seriously now. Stop lying to people. Gold is dead. It's been replaced by digital gold. All right. And the money going into ETFs will probably never come out. OK, so stop lying to people. Stern words. I'm tired, tired of these liars. Speaking of liars, Elizabeth Warren 
Chat It Up by Metal Old Man. Never forget, Senator Warren wants the government to decide for you which categories of assets you will be permitted to invest in. And of course, as a trained lawyer from Rutgers, I think, in Jersey, the SEC Gov is wrong on the law and wrong on the policy with respect to Bitcoin ETFs. These are what they call lawmakers who don't understand the law. Again, I'm tired of it. Tired. So in a heated moment this morning, I spent about 10 minutes trying to draw lines on a chart. And it's a new indicator. Okay. Um, remember the politicians you pay for. Shout out to Gary G and Elizabeth W for their tireless efforts to keep us poor and prevent us from grabbing onto the only life raft we have. Bitcoin up, by the way, 175% in less than a year. So just remember the politicians. Okay. They are not on your side, despite the fact that you pay for them and they're supposed to represent you. Shout out to the up-and-comer, the challenger in Massachusetts. Whatever you need, buddy, I'm here for you. Um, in addition, the charts have been breaking my screen. <laughs> this is from Moon Meow in the community, who sent this today at 8.17 a.m. And somebody had to do it. And literally, I have to keep on adjusting my charts so they can fit the candles in and... This is a good representation of what we're talking about here. And now <laughs> we are only 10% away from this new all-time high. And we did nearly, give or take a couple of hours, $14,000 move from top to bottom in 48 hours. I always say risk happens fast. And this thing moves. Wow. And there's a lot more move to come. You know, we've had, we had a four, $4,500 candle after two, $3,000 candles all in three subsequent days. Bingo. Okta, a week ago, I said, four positive weeks in a row at this stage in the market before having is an extremely bullish sign. And now we've got the ETFs too. Madness. And, and we've got people, Mohammed El Arian, shout out to Mohammed, very good macroeconomist. But when people like this start talking about Biddy, it's like, huh? On the back of another price surge this morning, Bitcoin has reclaimed its November 2021 level of $60,000. Again, when a guy like Mohammed posts about Bitcoin, you know the Bitcoin moment has arrived, everybody. He now puts this asset on the radar of people that would never even consider it. That's magical. Um, and MicroStrategy hit $1,000 today. It hit actually $1,000 and eight bucks. And... The big rumors are coming because now they are ranked number 471 in terms of market cap, right behind a company called William Sonoma. If you want to buy a $100 pepper grinder, that's where you go, by the way, above TransUnion and United Airlines, etc. And that is a crazy move. So the market cap now is nearly $15 billion. Therefore, S&P 500 has to welcome in MicroStrategy. Of course, it takes time. It took them years for them to do it for Tesla. But that's for other reasons. Um, but this, this will be big because this will force every single person on the planet that owns anything to do with the S&P 500 to buy indirectly MicroStrategy shares, which of course will be part of that self-fulfilling prophecy that I've been talking about for years. All right. One plus one equals two. It's very simple. Now we're going to get into the numbers and then I'm going to get into a whole bunch of charts afterwards. So I did tell you it's a big one today. So bear with me. There's just so much goodness going on. This is uh, day 32 raw numbers. Again, it's getting too small to see. So you might not see this chart anymore, but trust me, I have all the numbers. Now let's look at the macro view of where we are. We can see here, IBIT, red, biggest day ever, probably a bigger day today. And that's just what's happening. Also, there was a lot of dumpage from GBTC, but that didn't matter because BlackRock literally is taking in five or six times what Grayscale can dish out. Just BlackRock. Okay, that's important to remember. And let's look at some more data. We had the third best money flow day from 32 days. Not the best, but the third best. But remember, BlackRock's big. Sometimes the other ETFs take a while to follow. And we'll see. In addition, total money flow is up and to the right. That's the red line. Keeps on going up. And cumulative, sorry, cumulative is red. Total is blue for the day. And uh, again, another big day. 
Also, $17 billion into new ETFs in 32 days. You know this, not a big deal. What I do want to point out, though, is these nine new ETFs have 312,000 Bitcoin already. 312,000 Bitcoin, and they're growing very fast. BlackRock has nearly 140,000. Fidelity has over 100,000. They have grown so fast, and they will be at a million Bitcoin in a very short amount of time. If they can get their hands on it, though. That's the caveat there. And another view of the world as well. I want you to bear in mind when you see this chart that as the price of Bitcoin goes from, say, 40,000 up to 57,000, up to 64,000, the ETFs spend more money, but they're not getting as much Bitcoin because the price has gone up by like 20, 30%. So here, despite this, they still sucked 10,015 Bitcoin from the system. Remember, it was easy to pull 13,496 from the system when the price was 40,000. It's a different kettle of fish right now, ladies and gentlemen, and that's important to bear in mind. So welcome to the new part of this video is chart time. People say they love the charts. So let's go. Let's look at a couple of uh, on-chain ones first as well. Interesting. Bitcoin has only spent 30 days above $61,000. And we're higher than that right now. Uh, again, that is 30 over 5,000 days approximately, about 0 0.5 something percent. Again, closing above this level. And I showed you before, we've never had a monthly close this high as where we are now. So it's basically a shoe in that we're going to make a new all time high before the halving, pretty much guaranteed, in case anybody was doubting. <laughs> it's crazy. And MVRV. Still early days yet, so people who think we're getting toppy, no, we're not, not even close. And remember, you've, I've made so many videos on being in the market for the top days. These are not times where you dabble or try to be extra cute or smart. You know where the trajectory is going. You be on the train, you strap in, and you sit patiently. Don't try and be cutesy with the market, all right? It'll hand your head to you. Again, this shows you the impact of being in the best 10 days each year versus not. All right, so if we go back to 2013, it's 700% versus 500%. If we look at, say, 20, uh, 2014, just being in the market for 10 days, you made 200, 201%. If you weren't in the market for those 10 days, you made minus 86%. That is a tragic difference. 2018, you made 180% by being in the market for 10 days. You, <laughs> you lost 91% for not being in those markets, i.e. if you're in the market for the other 355 days, you get your butt handed to you. I said that like three times already today. I want to hammer it home so you don't screw up and you don't get cute and you don't listen to people who don't know what they're doing. 2022, all right? 10 days, you make 157%. If you're not in, if you're in the other 355 days, you lose 86%, everybody. So far this year, top 10 days, you made 52%. If you're not in for those 10 days, you lost 15%. All right. Let me know in the comments if I got that point across. Do not try and be cute at this stage of the game. Very serious. So I see people doing it all the time. It's like, no, 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 no. Don't. Now, my first ever banana chart. Never done one of these before. The <laughs> It's called the Bitcoin Banana Zone. Uh, one banana, two banana, three banana, four. Adapted from Bittel Julian. And you can see the yellow is the trajectory of where we're going, which looks very much like a banana. Now, the 2011-2012 cycle is on the left. 2014-2016, second from the left. 2019-2020 is one from the right and currently where we are in the banana cycle which takes us north of three hundred thousand dollars in 2024 we have only just begun remember the bananas and remember where we are we know the little brown little piece you peel back and in fact if you've ever saw a monkey opening a banana they do it from the other end the humans do it shows you they're smarter than us interesting tidbit anyhow um bitcoin patience here we are. Shout out to everybody who is patient. You can see that we are now at the level we were back in 2021, almost, give or take. And those who were able to just hang in there and wait, they did very well. Remember, it takes patience to be in this market. Don't try to get cute. All right. 
Now let's look at the Lilo target where we are today. This is our layer in layer out model with all the key levels based on history and a whole bunch of other formula in there to calculate exactly where this puppy could go. And right now level 10 is at $140,109 and this thing moves fast. We're heading to level seven, which is $71,000, which is just above the all time high. Level seven could happen very shortly, very shortly. And let's see what's happening at Bitcoin price. Uh, 61,000 again, a little bit of interruption, but still a monster day. Okay. People, pe people forget we were at like 57, 56 yesterday. And now it's like, Oh, 61,000 is almost disappointing because it was at 64,000. It's weird the way the human psyche works. I'm still trying to figure that out. Final chart of the day, everybody. And I will take a couple of questions. This is the uh, top and bottom indicator shows you when we're hot and cool obviously blue you buy all you can light blue you buy all you can lime green you can still stack we've just gone into yellow where you kind of maybe slow down your dca a little bit let the latecomers buy at this level but you can still buy of course but we just re-entered yellow again and we have a long way to go before orange and red but again shows you just like the mvrv we are still early everybody so um don't forget to subscribe. I won't waste your time, but I guarantee you every video, you learn a lot. And uh, a big thank you to everybody for coming. I'm going to take a couple of quick questions. Thank you as well to the mods in the chat, TND Tesla, K8, and everybody here as well. A shout out to Joseph and Coach Casey and B-Man and Mike in Arizona and everybody. So full disclosure now, Jim Cramer is the only indicator that beats IDSS. Bingo. I love that. Actually, it's very clever. Chaotic Coder. Oh, by the way, that's a crazy uh, Chaotic Coder has. <laughs> well, you're doing incredibly well for your years, young man. Uh, any thoughts on if ETFs would ever just have paper Bitcoin, just like gold ETFs? And this allows naked shorts and control of price. Excellent question. So we're going to have a lot more transparency and rigor than we do in gold. It's impossible to tell what gold exists. What is there? Is it really backed by the ETFs? But now after what I just showed, let me pull that slide up one more time, is the actual unencumbered proof of reserves from Kathy Wood. This ties directly into your question. You can see here, Kathy Wood's ARK Invest has integrated proof of reserves for its Bitcoin ETF. This means it proves that they have it and it should be unencumbered as well. So the, it'll become like an arms race in order for an ETF to be trusted. They're going to have to follow suit. And we all can already see a couple of ones, I think, Bitwise and Fidelity publish their Bitcoin address. So you can actually track the wallets yourself directly too. Great question, Keira Coder. And congratulations on your message earlier today. Very proud of you. I won't disclose what that is, but... People in Discord will know. Anyway, Mark Babasa, do we need to worry about Mr. 100 has nefarious plans, massive dumpage uh, for Bitcoin holders? No, this is this is either a sovereign wealth fund or a high net worth individual. And they just said, you know, let's buy $100 a day. They don't want to buy more than 100 because they don't want to rattle the market, but they don't care what the price is. They're buying at 35000 30000 40,000. They bought today at 60,000. They don't care. They just keep stacking 100 at a time. And they do that so they don't drive the spike up. And they're buying in a way where it can be tracked. It's not OTC as well. So from that perspective, it's super interesting. And I would not worry, Mark, about Mr. 100. Again, and there are probably many Mr. 100s that we're not even tracking. Everybody is stacking as well. Okay, a lot of questions today regarding miners. All the miners are down and weak. What's going on? Let me pull up uh, the actual chart for the miners. So you have some miners down hard today. Um, in particular, CleanSpark, Iris Energy, BitFarms, all down 10%. So what's going on? Uh, I did expect this question. So I think it's a confluence of factors like everything else in the world. One, um, Investors are worried now. They've seen extraordinary gains. We were buying CleanSpark at $6 three weeks ago. <laughs> Shot to more than 22. It's nuts. But at the same time, everybody's now nervous that the miners don't have ample rigs, uh, modern rigs, or enough hash to be able to compete post-halving. So 
That's the first factor. So people are getting nervous and maybe they're allocating towards micro strategy because they know that's going to be added to the S&P 500. The Bs hover around. You, you know the score there. Second thing, you have miners probably maybe diluting a little bit out there uh, because they, it's a, quite a great time to raise money. You don't want your stock diluting at six bucks, but if they're getting $22 a share in, that's the time to dilute, okay? Three weeks ago, $6. Today, 22 Sell a bit of shares, get some cash, turn that into minting machines that mint Bitcoin. And again, as I mentioned before with Bitcoin, don't try to get cute. Don't try time market. We've made extraordinary, absolutely life-changing gains on CleanSpark and other miners too. Um, just sit and wait. It'll come back. And I'm I'm not even certain that they're selling shares. I know some of them definitely are. Um, I know that Riot spent $100 million in rigs yesterday. So that's just what's, ha what's happening out there. Um, we just have to wait. And it could be a rough time. So the, the beauty of the miners is they run counter to Bitcoin. Sometimes they run up with Bitcoin. Sometimes they run opposite to it. Up to the halving, there'll be a lot of nervousness. So hold tight. Maybe hedge a little bit is... Not financial advice. Um, and McDonald, I've, thanks to you, accumulated a good amount of microstrategy. And would you convert to Tesla and take advantage of the pricing? Um, I think about this all the time. Uh, there will come a time for that, but we're not quite there yet. Now, Tesla could have their chat GPT moment and the stock could fly, kind of like NVIDIA does. But I don't think we're there yet. Um, I think we have some more time. Microstrategy, Bitcoin is the place to be for now and then after the having see what miners survive that'll be the place to be and then we'll watch tesla very very carefully for that chat gpt moment i know we're real close but i don't know if that's two weeks 12 weeks six months or a year away but i do know as well they have a ton of margin coming they have nearly i've calculated nearly four billion dollars in unaccrued revenue from things like warranties and energy business that they can at last recognize. And that'll go straight to the bottom line. And earnings, I think, will be better than expected this year. And of course, they got the best-selling car in the world. They just launched uh, prototypes of the Roadster, which is going to be the most mind-blowing sports car ever made in the history of the planet. Bye-bye Lamborghini and Ferrari. They're toast. FSD is this close. Mega Pack business is off the charts. Cybertruck, 7.2-year waiting list. Model 2 is coming. They're breaking ground in Mexico in about three days um, for the Model 2. And there's talk of an India Gigafactory too. While every other car maker is retrenching. This And remember, this is not a car maker as well. So, McDonald, hope that helps. Hold for now. Hold the microstrategy for now. And from Sabi, at, this, at these prices, it's still early to make a Solalt portfolio. I bought a Solalt today on a dip. And I'd been waiting weeks for it to hit. And it hit literally probably during the Coinbase outage. I was dangling my little limit order uh, on Jupiter, jup.ag, and it filled. So I'm buying. Not financial advice. So thank you, Savvy, for the question. And thank you, Miles in Arizona. Thank you all for coming. I hope you like this show. Wow. Nearly 9,000 people watching live. Never had that before for a Bitcoin video. Thanks, everybody. You take care. Stay healthy. Number one priority is stay healthy so you can enjoy the fruits of our packing during the bear. Thanks, everybody. And thank you again to the mods in chat. And I'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs> Not later today. This is the, the one video for today. Okay. Thank you.